Okay guys, this is Mad Matt Wonka here with uh, my first GIMP tutorial. Uh, as you can see we're right now looking at my desktop, I do have the GIMP open. My desktop is extremely cluttered and I have stopped my background slideshow. Um, and so uh, we're just going to run through a little bit of overview. I'm going to actually close that, which is sad because I use it a lot. Uh, and get you to probably what you might end up looking at when you first start up GIMP. Uh, so this is the main GIMP dialog box thingy. I'm sure it has an official name. Uh, and on here, you've got the list of all of your tools and icons, which I believe you can customize. I think I've actually dropped some from mine. And in here is uh, just some options. So what we're going to do, we're going to go File. Um, and we'll just do some basic stuff in here. File, new, of course, makes a new image. Open opens an image that you've used. Uh, extensions and all of this other stuff really doesn't... I haven't really played around with a lot. I don't really know what I'm doing there. Keyboard shortcuts, though, is very useful. And I have done some very useful keyboard shortcuts. Um, so anyway, we're going to create a new image today. Uh, just to show you how to get started with GIMP. Uh, there's a couple different options that you have here. Uh, first of all, you can just do the standard um, X by Y. Uh, and, you know, this is just kind of a really small image. You can also pick inches millimeters, points, and pickas, and whatever else. I normally use pixels, because uh, it's what I've used. You can also change resolution and come up with some notes. Uh, I tend to use RGB color. Um, never really play with that. In fact, if it is grayscale, I change it back, because, hey, look, I'm on a computer. Color is cheap and really easy to do. Um, so up here are templates, and these, um, like, this is the standard, I guess. Uh, for, these are fairly good sizes for... Uh, you know, computer wall screens. Um, these are just like the sizes of paper, just like you would get off of your printer. Um, U.S. letter is normally a good one for an actual size. Um, and, you know, they got a bunch of options there, and you can also download more. I'm just going to go with this basic one to show you uh, some of the stuff. Um, so in here, uh, as you can see, I can click and drag here. Um, one of the things the GIMP does is it does keep um, this dialog as a separate um, window as opposed to the main drawing window. Um, what this lets you do is if you want to have several images open, I can just make a new image and suddenly bam, I've got a second image open. And uh, GIMP knows the last one of these that you've touched. And so um, if I need to add a tab here. I'm going to add tabs, layers. I'll explain a little bit more about this layer later. Um, but if I go and make a new layer, let's make that one. Uh, I can click here, and it, as you see, I don't have to like do anything else. It over here, it switches to this one. This is layer two. This is layer one. This is layer two. This is layer one, or image one, I suppose. I'm um, not going to save because I didn't do anything with it. Uh, so, um, up here we have the basic, you know, top stuff. We got the file, new, open, open as layers, uh, which is kind of useful because you can open up, say, an image that you've downloaded from the internet or something, and it opens it up not as a new image but as a layer. You can also take the b basic GIMP um, image file, the .xcf, and it'll open all of those layers in it. The GIMP can also do uh, PSDs, which is the uh, Photoshop, um, and it can do a lot of formats. Some are a little bit trickier than others, like uh, PDFs take a little bit more work. Open location, I'm not entirely sure what that does. Open recently shows the recent ones that I've messed with. Um, this is screenshot, save, save as, save as copy. Um, so that's kind of useful. Save as a template, which means it'll automatically open up as it uh, revert back to a previous save. Prints, which I haven't really had work very well because I think it's just printing the top layer. Uh, close, close all windows, etc. Under edit, um, we have undo and redo. Pretty simple concepts. Undo history opens up a dialog. Uh, and the thing with GIMP dialogs, if they're actual like boxes like this, I can come and click on the name and I can drag it here. And if I did it right, which I didn't, I can click on the name and drag it here. Supposed to be able to click on the name and drag it there. I don't know what's going on. Huh. Okay. 
It's supposed to work. Anyway, uh, a lot of dialogue. Cause it's the same thing. Okay, I guess it doesn't let this one drag, but I know I can open it up over here. Uh, anyway, but this gives you a list of all the changes that you make. So if I make that, we go back to the undo, there's this pencil sketch that I've done that I can go uh, and hit buttons on to undo and redo, and it shows you where you're at in the chain, which is kind of cool. Um, cut and copy and copy visible, skips all the transparency, I guess. Um, pasting, makes sense. Paste into, paste as, you know, all of these are kind of fairly self-explanatory. Um, <laughs> what is the buffer? Will it tell me what it is? It won't. Awesome. Um, clear. Uh, if I hit clear, it'll delete, and because it's a background image, it'll fill it in with a background color. If I, like, swapped colors and then deleted it, it would delete to black, but we'll keep it on white right now. Um, fill with the foreground color, fill with the background color, which is really cool. I've never noticed those before. Um, so, which means that I can go control comma, and hey, look, it's black, and hey, look, it's white. That's actually kind of useful, maybe? I don't know. I'll have to see. I'll have to keep that in mind. Um, preferences, keyboard shortcuts again. Over on the next, um, under select, uh, select all and none. Invert, this inverts the selection, doesn't invert the color, just the selection. Float, uh, what float does is if you have some weird snaky thing and you come and you grab it and you go selection, float, it'll make this, pretty much it goes cut and paste. And so you don't have the image any there anymore, and it's a new floating selection, which means I can take it and move it over here. I can also come over here and hit new, and it'll make it as a new layer. So, um, I need a selection again. Uh, select select by color actually brings up in a different tool from path. I don't really use path. Selection editor, not really sure what it does. Feather and sharpen change how the border works. Shrink and grow, extend the size border. Um, which is kind of how I use, make my speech bubbles, um, you know, takes a line, simple line that you have, and it gives you an option to say five, and suddenly you now have a little frame. So that's kind of useful. Uh, distort makes a weird shape out of it, and so if I, you just use default settings, it should be pretty quick because it's a small image, it gives us a weird shape instead, and it quickly goes back. Uh, rounded rectangle, you know, it's exactly what it sounds like. Rounds the corners of it. Don't really ever use that. Uh, quick mask, which I don't really use. There's also this little button down here to turn it on and off. Um, what it is, I can draw and paint selections. Um, and then turn it off. And then it does this weird selection of it. I'm not very proficient in it. It's not something that I use. Um, save to channel. Again, I'm not good with channels, so I'm going to move on to the next one. A uh, view. Um, some of these are actually kind of useful if you're doing... Normally, I really don't mess around here. Though sometimes I actually accidentally hit uh, shift Control t Actually, no. What I do is if you like are on the side and you click, you can draw a line. That'll give you a nice horizontal line across the side, which is kind of useful. But then it's kind of there and you can't really do anything with it. And so, uh, normally, every under view I go and I turn uh, guide off. Um, that's really looking down here, all that I do with it. So, image, image I use a lot more. Um, mode, change it for when I scan it in my scanner, it comes in as grayscale, and I do have to change it to RGB so I can add color. So, that's kind of useful. Uh, transform you know, flips the entire image, not just the layer, but the entire image back and forth. And you can also do vertical flips, rotating, um, slice into the sub-images, which I've never used. Canvas size changes the actual size of the canvas that we had set up, you know, the 420 by 300. Uh, and whenever you see this little chain here, if you, if they're linked, it'll keep the same aspect ratio. Uh, so if we get it up to, like, say, uh, 800, or eight, eight would work. <sighs> Wait, what's going on? Okay, things are being silly on me. That's my recording software. Uh, it's not a 
perfect ratio because we are going from low to higher and it's trying to do something else. Anyway, ignore all those annotation things, the bubbles that just popped up. And this is the canvas size. You can actually take it and grab it. So if you don't need all that space in the bottom right over here, I'm pretending as if nothing had happened. Anyway, uh, keeping the aspect ratio means that when you change the top, the bottom will change by the same proportion. Um, you can also unclick it and just change just the top. So that's whenever you see that. And there's also pixels and percents and stuff. Uh, going down here to the set in canvas size, uh, you can offset it if you need something precise. Or you can grab it and say, I needed a bunch of room on the top left instead of the top right. And you can kind of move. And then the new uh, size of the actual canvas itself is set to that. And the image is set. The rest of the image that was already there is set to where it was. Um, so that's canvas size. Fit canvas to layers uh, is another kind of useful thing. If you've got a layer that is like off, you can see because it's a little hyphenated yellow border, uh, you can go image fit canvas sit on the right thing, uh, fit canvas to layers, and it'll actually go to just where that layer is, and not quite where it was, what I wanted, hold on, um, but if we duplicate, and move this over here, and go, so we've got two layers going off, or just a layer over here at all, we can go layer, um, image, let's try image, fit canvas to layers, and it'll shrink the actual canvas size to there, so what actually gets displayed at the end is just where those two layers are. Um, <laughs> print size, I messed with. Scale image uh, changes the entire image. All of the layers get scaled down as well. Um, so that's pretty useful. I use that to finish up my comics and take them down through their 750 width. Uh, auto crop image removes empty borders. Don't really play with that at all. I normally keep things about the same size. Um, merge visible layers will take all of these layers and make them one which I never really use, but if you want to do, you know, shrink a file size, uh, you could do that. Um, flatten image does the exact same thing. It removes, it uh, takes all the layers, gives you one layer and no transparency, which is what you need for like bitmaps and stuff like that. Um, guides, I haven't really, I've used guides every once in a bit. I use grids every once in a bit, but I really don't use much more of that. Layers, a uh, new layer, control shift N, probably one of the more useful codes that I use. Uh, for messing with layers, at least. Um, hey, I have a key code for merge down. I've never used. Um, anyway, new layer, you know, brings up a new layer that's uh, normally the image size, I think. Duplicate layer, you know, takes the current layer and makes a copy of it. Uh, merge down takes the layer you're currently on and mixes it with the one below. Uh, delete layer, yeah. Um, the stack... This is the stack of layers. I never really mess around with it there um, because I can take it and it's not letting me because it's stupid. But anyway, I can move these around. Oh, that's right. Okay, I've totally just remembered that I've messed around with uh, the this recording software before and this whole GIMP messing around with stuff doesn't work. I can't drag stuff while doing the uh, Camtasia because it's doing something weird with my mouse, I think. Um, so I guess I would have to use the buttons if I'm doing it with recording, which is annoying. Um, I would probably actually stop recording and mess with stuff. Um, but yeah, normally you can just drag around instead of having to worry about the stack. Uh, but you know, select. I actually use selecting up and down kind of a bit. Mask, I don't really use mask. Transparencies, I don't really use. Transform, you know, it's the exact same thing, you know, where you can take an image and ro ro rotate a layer around. So that's kind of useful to stay on the same thing. Uh, layer boundary size does the same thing canvas size did. Layer to image size makes all of those little yellow lines go to the canvas size, which is kind of useful if you've just moved something slightly and you want to square it, square it up so you can fill just the area. Scale layer makes sense. Auto crop liquid rescale is a plugin that I put in. Uh, it's not working quite like I wanted to. Um, colors there's a bunch of options in here to mess with colors. Uh, color balance I don't really use. Hue and saturation I don't really use. Brightness contrast I really don't use a lot of these. Threshold. Uh, if I'm messing with a black and white image, um, you can do it. We'll mess around with that in a different episode, but that's there. Uh, levels is another pretty awesome thing. Again, with really black and white images. We're not not actually. You can do color with it, but um, it changes pretty much the detail levels. It's kind of confusing. We'll probably spend a day just on colors. Um, color tools, curves, same thing. Posturize. 
uh, is kind of cool. What it does is it reduces the number of colors in the image uh, to what this number is. And so two should do it to like black and white. I think it actually does it to like four colors. Um, desaturate removes all color from an image. This invert is the black and white invert. And so if we do that on a layer, you guys can see. Um, you know, what was black is now white, and etc., etc. Um, value invert, I haven't really messed with. There's a bunch of stuff. Pretty much, I stopped messing with stuff there. There's a co couple of different things that I've used to try and tweak stuff, but I'm never going to be able to figure out what they did, and I'm never going to use them again until I suddenly need to tweak stuff. Tools, these are all of the different tools that we have. I'm probably just going to end up running through this top menu. And then I'll spend another day on tools. Um, these two are extremely useful uh, commands, though. That you know, as you're messing with GIMP, uh, you know, I think people really use. Um, first of all, is default color. If you hit D on your keyboard, it changes it to black and white. You can also hit this little button here, uh, and it'll change it to black and white. Uh, and then if you hit X, it reverses the colors. So if you've come in here and gotten some weird red color. You can move it to the background and suddenly, you know, be able to draw with white instead of red. And then if you want to go back to black and white, you can go back to black and white. So that's really cool. Uh, swap colors and default colors. Two most useful things ever. Dialogues. These are all the little boxes I was talking about. So there's my undo history. Um, there's my, you know, this... Uh, I haven't really messed with, I haven't really messed with a lot of these. Um, layers is what I have open now that displays all of the layers, which is great because sometimes it gets really com complex. Um, channels I don't really mess with. Paths, I've messed with a little bit, but I don't really mess with them much. Histogram, no clue. Selection and navigation, uh, you can really click on here and use the same thing as navigation, really. Um, so I don't use the navigation dialog. Undo history, I talked about pointer colors. Um, if I open up this, will you please go over there? No? Uh, okay. Um, we're going to pretend uh, that it's over here. Um, with this, it lets you mess with colors. You can, in fact, type in here, you know, things like blue. And it'll bring up a blue. Uh, it does have a list of colors. There's all these different ways. This is my palette um, that I've set up for my comic that I use. Uh, there's all these different ways of doing it. I normally keep it with here uh, because I feel there's a little bit more easy control. Um, what else do you use? I can just go add tabs. This would be a little bit easier for me. Uh, brushes is kind of useful. I normally stay with this um, circle three, which is a five by five little square thing. Uh, but there's all these ones, including this massive thing I've made. Because uh, you can, in fact, mess around with making more brushes. I really haven't because... Um, a plain line is fine for me. Um, adding a tab, there's patterns that, you know, and gradients. Gradients are kind of useful, but once again, I haven't really messed with them. Um, uh, this is the list of all the different palettes. My list changes because I accidentally type different names for it as I'm going on, uh, but there's all these different ones, so mine is S at the moment. Let's try and change it back to CIG palette. See how long that lasts. Not long at all, apparently. Um, so don't really use this tab once I have my palette selected. But sometimes I do have to open it and select the palette. Um, <laughs> fonts uh, I can get at from the text options. Images, document, templates, tools, errors. Is this really all I use? Uh, tool options is pretty good, but it's already over there. Um, layers is pretty good, but it's already over there. I think there's one more. I don't know what it is. I'll have to mess around with it. Uh, but those are the dialogues. They're actually really useful, and you'll end up with, uh, like normally I have, I do end up with two things. I've got this uh, being all dialogue-y with normally just one or two things. Normally it's tool options and it's color, and the color palette. There's like a way you can pull up the color palette. What is it? It's add tab. And then you click on palettes and you double click on it, right? Yeah, and it brings this up and then I can click and drag it if it's working and it's not. Um, so this is my color palette. 
I like it. The color is Tammy 3 officially in my palette. Um, you know, all of these are windows. If, when they're combined like this, you can, you know, minimize them and they're all grouped together. So sometimes that's really useful to know that, oh, I need these colors here. And you pull them up. So you could probably set up different palettes. No, I don't think you can. Um, but you can quickly change to them. And there's, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with it. Dialogues are cool. Uh, filters, there's a bunch of different filters, you know, some make plasma clouds, others do blurs and stuff. Uh, re uh, these two things up here, you know, we'll go through a bunch of filters some other days, um, but these two are kind of important. If you decided that it wasn't enough, you can redo it, and if you decided you want to look at it again, uh, let's do some actual things. Let's clear some stuff out of the way. Uh, <laughs> So let's take this layer, and let's go layer to image size, and let's go black. See what I did there? I hit X and D and gave myself a weird thing. It's like a worm. Yeah. Um, so if I go filters and I go uh, blur and Gaussian blur, which is the one that I use because it does give you a little bit more control, and because I'm using a big thing, I kick it all up. And I go, push, loads across. Now the worm's out of focus. But I'm like, you know what? That wasn't enough. And so I hit Control Z or Undo. Go back to Filters. I can hit Repeat, and it'll do it again. It does actually run it again. Um, I think it uses the same seeds, though, if that matters. And then you can go Reshow. And you're like, you know what? Let's kick it up a notch. Push. And now you really can't tell what it is. So that's what those two do. Um, and so there's a bunch of filters in there. Reset resets all the data values in it. Uh, video is something that I've, another plugin that I've put in called the uh, GIMP Animation Project, which I haven't figured out how it works at all. I probably should do stuff with it. Um, but, um, let's see, you're here. Let's go over here. We got, you know, um, this right here is the measuring stick thingy. So you can see that it does go to the 878. And so if I actually like zoomed all the way up and went to this corner, you know, you could tell that, yeah, it's at 878. Um, and so that tells you the size here. It tells you how many layers. It tells you some useful information up there. It gives you the numbers. You've got these little arrowy things, which I can't really point at because they're pointing at my pointer. Um, and they're keeping track of where your mouse is. So you can see that, oh, Look, this is at like 132. That also tells you this information over here, uh, which also I can't point at. See, there's the numbers of where I'm at. Um, this one changes your units. I stay on pixels. This one changes your zoom, which I go plus and minus. Um, and that works well for me. This gives you information. This gives you a lot of information, actually. It's always useful to kind of keep an eye on this. Right now, it's telling me the layer and how big of a file it is. Um, and so if I duplicate it, it's telling me that that layer means, you know, that the, I think it's actually the image is a little bit more. Yeah, because otherwise it wouldn't be scaling this easy. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what that number is. Sometimes it's layer. Apparently it looks like it's image now. I'm not sure. And that's the move around button. And this does give you, uh, something. What is this? Oh, that's an option where you can change where if I went like bigger or smaller it would change the actual size of the window that I was working with see now I can't really work with it so that's kinda useless so anyway that's the GIMP I really like the GIMP it's awesome um, this mouse flickery thing from the filming stuff is really damaging my calm um, I can't tell when I've done stuff or not. There we go. Um, <laughs> I think that's pretty much it. We'll do tools and other stuff and other videos before and give a full introduction to the GIMP before I start, um, you know, trying to show you guys how to do stuff. So if you have anything that you want to see, please let me know in comments below. Uh, and the, once again, this is Mad Matt Wonka, and this is the GIMP, and I'll stay online. Yeah, I wish I could edit stuff out, but I don't do that. So, anyway, this is Mem at One Cow. Uh, I love the GIMP, so stay online, and I'll see you next time. That also sounds really weird. I might have to come up with another ending for these. But anyway, catch you guys later.